All right. Our last project was assignment four and doing our color logo. And the last thing I did in that project was after saving my color variations, I was here. I chose which one do I want to print for my midterm? Do I want my black logo or do I want my color logo? And the class thought color. So now I saved it as a different name. Carl Midterm Critique 1. Remember that when I open this file, I set it to be 8 by 10 by 350. 8 by 10 inches by 350. Mine's just 10 by 8 because I'm landscape format, wider than I am tall. Okay, now I'm going to use this same file to output all of my midterm critique prints. My first one's going to be my logo. So what do I do? I say layer. change that, sorry, I'm going to say file, save as, actually export as, <laughs> go down to more, and go to TIFF. This is a new format. This is what's called an archive format. We've talked about illustrator format, and SVG and EPS, those are transferable vector formats. TIFF is a transferable raster format, like PNG, like JPEG. Unlike PNG and JPEG, TIFF does not lose any data. So it is not a loss compression format. It is also not owned by Adobe, so it can be opened by any other image software as well, including print software. So TIFF, T-I-F-F. It's also what raw photographs are captured in on digital cameras, right? Now, when it gets to that save for T-I-F-F, we are going to put the initials PR dash in front of our name. That shows that we are intending for this to be print ready. And then we're going to save it. Now you'll notice that PR didn't come up here. So that means this new file is in my downloads. Bring that to your desktop and then you're going to open another instance of Photopea. We're just going to try to knock these all out in a way that protects them. And we're going to drag that TIFF into it. And when we do that, what do you notice about the TIFF? It's flattened. Okay. So TIFFs, even though I outputted it from a multi-layered file, TIFFs will always be best used when they're flattened. What's weird about TIFFs is they don't need to be flattened. They can support layers, but you never want them to because they're made for printing. And layers add extra memory, even if they have nothing on them. And why don't you want extra memory when you're printing? It's because the printer has to spool the data and it can buffer and stop, you know, if there's too much data for it, which is also why you don't want to print something 8 by 10 by 1600 pixels per inch. Instead, you, you stick to the, the regular parameters so that the printer runs quickly and smoothly so the inks don't dry at different rates because the printhead keeps stopping for buffering. All right, so we've got our first one as a TIFF. So that looks great. Now let's set up our next one. So maybe I don't want my logo anymore, and I don't want you to print both your color and your black logo because they're such the same thing. So pick one of those if you have your logo finished. And then otherwise, what are some of the other ones I might want to do? Well, exercise one, I have this jumble. Yeah, it was all right. Exercise two, I liked my little guy with the monocle. So what's my best one? Maybe I want to do that. So I'm actually going to take my finished PNG and I'm going to drag and drop it in and move it above my white background, <laughs> right? Okay, now to make this print ready, I have the black space here and I have the white space there, but it doesn't look that great to have this on a landscape format. So how can I change it? Well, I'm just going to go to canvas size, image canvas size, and change it in inches from 10 by 8, which was for my logo, to 8 by 10. 
so that's taller than it is wide, fill the background with white, with edit fill, even though it would fill it with white anyway when it flattens it. But now I'm going to take the smart object, right? And I'm going to do option command T and I'm going to hold down option and grow it from the middle to lay it out and make it look good in that map. Now this might be my second piece. So how do I save this? I go to file, export as, all the way down to TIFF. And then I rename it. This is midterm critique two. And then let me check it. Open up a new instance of photo P. Go from my downloads onto my desktop. This is my second TIFF now. What happened there? That was weird. To my desktop. And now let's open that in Photo P. And you can see that it's flattened. All right, next. Yeah. Yes. So I forgot to put PR. I want you to do all this stuff to make it really clear that you're not overwriting your assignments. So I have PR for midterm one. I'll, I'll rename this one. PR for midterm critique two. And then I'm also going to mark them both with gray. And again, this is just choosing the three you want to print from the first half of the class. Okay, I'm going to do a tricky one now that hangs up some students. So now I want to do my landscape. Assignment one. These should all be files that have large enough resolution for printing. So your proving grounds, a lot of you only had it for screen resolution. So if you print those, they're going to look really blurry. So better to choose something that has enough resolution for printing. Now this one, I did a resubmission, right? So I'm going to drag my resubmission in and turn off the other layers. And this doesn't look too great because if I matted it with this placement, it would have a big white stripe on the top and bottom. So instead, I free transform it and I'm just gonna shrink it a little bit so that it's floating. So it has the black mat and then white paper and then my image. And that's gonna look a lot more professional. Now, what if my landscape is wider than it is tall, right? Well, then I just go to image canvas size as we did before, and I change it to 10 inches by eight inches. And you can decide what looks better. My landscape is pretty much a square. And then you can always just check it and see if that resolution looks good. What if I didn't want to do my landscape? I'll just go through all of the options pretty much. I've done exercise two, I've done assignment one. What if I wanted to do my storyboard? Well, the nice thing about your storyboard is that if I open up a new version of Photoshop or Photo P here, I can open up my PSD of my refined storyboard. And if you remember, the image size that we set for it was quite large, it was able to be 8 by 10 by 375, which is actually 30 by 40 inches at 150 pixels per inch, or 100 pixels per inch. So this one's good to go. But if I wanted to really be sure of it, I could take the one I submitted to Canvas, the JPEG, and I can bring it on to here. So there's my JPEG. And then when you save the JPEG as a TIFF, you are getting rid of all the loss compression formatting. So I'm going to now change this canvas size to be 8 by 10, taller than it is wide. And then I can take this smart object and Option Command T, free transform it, and I can fit it on without going too close to the edge, because remember, there's a half inch difference. So basically, it's formatted already 
to work perfectly for an 8x10. If you wanted to print your animation, you would print it with your refined storyboard. And then you save that, export it as a TIFF, and you change the name, and you put PR in front of it to the desktop. Okay, the last thing i got to show you about making your stuff print ready, once you have three of them, is where to put them. Okay, so now I can close Photo P. I can get this latest one from my downloads to my desktop. And then I can organize them all together. And then I can also mark with, let's do red, the PSD that I use to output all of these out of Photo P. And now I'm going to organize all my files and put them into my midterm critique prints file. So these three, they are all flattened, all high resolution, all made for printing at 8 by 10 pixels per inch. Some of them were made with vectors, some of them were made with just raster files, but they're all at the right resolution for printing. Now, this is the part you really have to pay attention to. This is new. In order to print them, we need to put them into our dedicated print file for the, the studio. So this is not your own Dropbox account. This is the Dropbox account that you'll find linked under links. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause the video because I don't want this public, right? Click on links and then navigate. And then when I restart the video, we'll be in Dropbox. Mm -hmm. Now we have all of our midterm critique prints as TIFFs saved into a folder. We go to our Dropbox folder. You find your folder under flattened TIFF. So let's, let me go to the very beginning here. You first click on digital art class files. Then you click on flattened TIFF files to print. You might find this kind of stacked order a little bit easier. And then within that, you'll find your particular folder. So I'll just pick one here. Because you haven't added any files to print yet, it's going to look like this. You're just going to drag and drop all of them in. And then they will all show up. And then you are done. Except that we are doing our logos. If you finished your logo, we are doing it as a service learning project, right? So what I'm asking you to do for me to use your logo as part of the veterans murals, veteran centers murals, is to find your EPS file, not your SVG, your EPS file, and drag and drop that in as well. Doesn't mean I'm going to be printing your EPS, but it means I have an example of your finished vector that can be incorporated into the full wall mural. And if you want to keep working on your vector and we can always update this EPS by the end of the semester because I'm not doing any of these designs until the Veteran Center is actually built. Does that make sense? All right. So we have our TIFF files and we have our EPS file. And then you're done with Dropbox. And then I will print them and we will have our critique next class.